Hello, I'm Seema from Hello Basics. I welcome you all for the next video on wave optics. In today's video, we'll discuss how intensity is distributed in interference pattern. Let us start with the two waves which are having same speed, same wavelength, same frequency, same time period and with equal amplitudes. They are traveling in the same direction with constant phase difference phi. These waves are represented as E1 is equal to E0 sin omega t and E2 is equal to E0 sin omega t plus phi. Here we are taking electric field for these two or electric displacement for these two waves. Where omega is its angular frequency which is same. So frequency is same. E0 is amplitude that is also same for both the waves and E1 and E2 are their instantaneous values of electric displacement. For these two waves when they are traveling in same direction they interfere with each other and when they interfere with each other their resultant displacement is given by E is equal to E1 plus E2. Here we are using E1 and E2 because we are considering electric field. Now we want to find out this resultant. For that we will substitute value of E1 and E2 from this and we get it as E0 sin omega t plus E0 sin omega t plus phi. Now here this sin omega t plus phi will simplify and we will write down first term is as it is and E0 sin omega t cos phi plus E0 cos omega t sin phi. This I am solving by sin theta plus phi or sin x plus y is equal to sin x cos y cos x sin y. Further we will simplify this for that E0 sin omega t is common in first two terms. So we will take it common and we will write it as E0 sin omega t 1 plus cos phi plus E0 cos omega t sin phi second term is sorry third term is as it is. We will substitute values for 1 plus cos phi and sin phi using trigonometric relations and we know that 1 plus cos phi is equal to 2 cos square phi by 2. From where I got this? I got it from relation 1 plus cos of 2 theta is equal to 2 cos square theta. Using that I am writing this and sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta. Using that this sine phi we write as sine of 2 phi by 2 or that is equal to 2 sin phi by 2 cos phi by 2. Now these values when we substitute in above equation we can write here resultant E is equal to E0 sin omega t 2 cos square phi by 2 plus E0 cos omega t 2 sin phi by 2 cos phi by 2. From this E0 2 cos phi by 2 is common in these two terms. So we will take out that common and we will write this as 2 E0 cos phi by 2. Then as we are taking it common what is left here sin omega t and 1 cos by cos phi by 2. So sin omega t cos phi by 2 and from this term what is left cos omega t sin phi by 2. So we get this term and if we observe this square bracket term we can see here that sin omega t cos phi by 2 cos omega t sin phi by 2 can be written as sin of omega t plus phi by 2. So substituting this value here 
we get it as 2 e0 cos pi by 2 sin omega t plus pi by 2. So, this is value for resultant electric field at the time of interference as E is given by 2 E0 cos pi by 2 sin omega t plus pi by 2. Amplitude for this is given by 2 E0 cos pi by 2. And as amplitude is given by this, from that amplitude, we can find out its intensity and intensity is directly proportional to square of amplitude. On that basis, we can write that I is e given by square of this. So, it is 4 E0 square cos square 5 by 2. That is equal to 4 I0 cos square 5 by 2. What is value of I0? I0 is nothing but E0 square. That is intensity of interfering waves. We know that interfering waves are having same amplitude. So, their intensities are also same. So, at interference, we get intensity which is given by 4 times the intensity of original wave multiplied by cos square of phi by 2 where phi is the phase difference between the two waves. Now this intensity we want to find out for constructive interference and destructive interference. So for constructive interference amplitude is given by E0C is equal to E0 plus E0 because both are having same amplitude so that is equal to twice of E0 and its intensity IC is proportional to modulus of twice of E0 square. Therefore, intensity of constructive interference is 4 times I0 that is 4 times the intensity of original wave or interfering waves. What about destructive interference? For destructive interference, amplitude will be E0D is equal to E0 minus E0 that is equal to 0 and due to that ID is equal to 0 or intensity of destructive interference is 0. This is for the two waves which are having same amplitude. So, for same amplitude, intensity of constructive interference is 4I0, whereas intensity of destructive interference is 0, and we get proper bright and dark fringe. But if amplitudes of the two waves are not same, then what happens? Suppose that they are E10 and E20. So, for constructive interference, amplitude will be given by E0C is equal to E10 plus E20 and intensity is given by IC is proportional to modulus of E10 plus E20 square. For destructive interference, it is given by E0D is equal to E10 difference E to 0 because we don't know which one is greater so we are taking its difference and its intensity is proportional to modulus of E10 minus E to 0 square. So in this way we can get intensity for constructive interference as well as for destructive interference which is depending on amplitude of electric field. This interference fringes, we have seen that they are equally bright and equally spaced. Now, they are equally bright and equally spaced within the limit of vanishing width of the slits. Means, for the slit width, whatever it is, for that portion we talk about this, they are equally bright and equally spaced. But if width of the slit is large or slits are wide slits in this in that case the waves which are reaching at a particular point on the screen 
are from different points along the slit and they differ in path length traveled due to that intensity changes and intensity will not remain same it becomes blur and poor con contrast we say that slit width should be small so that we can get clear and with proper contrast interference pattern this is discussed in conditions for interference also if you want you can watch that video for reference we know that resultant amplitude of two interfering waves having same amplitude is given by r is equal to 2 e0 cos phi by 2 where e0 is amplitude of those two waves and phi is phase bit difference between them but if they are not having same amplitude in that case we can write resultant amplitude as under root of e10 square plus e20 square plus 2 e10 e20 cos phi phase difference is same phi only their amplitudes are different that is e10 and e20 and from this expression very easily i can come to this expression just by substituting here e0 here e0 and for these two also e0 this mathematical expression you can very easily solve and you can come to this expression now as we know amplitude we can find out intensity also for that and intensity of the resultant wave is given by i is equal to e10 square plus e20 square plus 2 e10 e20 cos phi where e10 square and e20 square are intensities of the two interfering waves as i1 and i2 and with the help of this we can write down this expression as i1 plus i2 plus 2 under root i1 i2 cos phi from this expression we can come to the expression of two interfering waves of same intensity means of same amplitude and for that we can write for i1 is equal to i2 is equal to i0 i is equal to 2 i0 1 plus cos phi how we come to this expression just by substituting here i0 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 and i0 so from these two terms i'll get 2 i0 and from second this term i get i0 2 i0 by taking that 2 i0 common we get it as 2 i0 1 plus cos phi and 1 plus cos phi is 2 cos square phi by 2 this expression is just similar to the expression which we have seen earlier now we want to see the ratio of maximum intensity to minimum in intensity when amplitudes are not same see we are doing all these things because these formulae are required for solving numericals to find out ratio of maximum intensity to minimum intensity means it is the ratio of intensity for constructive interference to destructive interference and to find that intensity first of all we'll take a ratio of their amplitudes and their amplitudes ratio is given by e max upon e minimum is equal to e10 plus e20 upon e10 difference e20 from that we can find out intensity ratio and we know that intensity is square of amplitude or is proportional to square of amplitude so we can write this expression as i max upon i minimum is equal to e max square upon e minimum square will substitute its value and we come to equation that it is e10 plus e20 upon e10 minus e20 bracket square and this gives us the ratio of intensity of maximum to minimum intensity now this we can further simplify by taking e10 common from numerator as well as from denominator and if we take that common we get here 1 plus e20 upon e10 divided by 1 minus e20 upon 
E10. E10 which we have taken common from numerator and denominator will get cancelled and we come to this expression and here further we can write this E20 upon E10 as R and by substituting for this as R we can write this expression as 1 plus R upon 1 minus R bracket square is nothing but the I max upon I minimum and this expression will make your calculations very easy. So these are the formulae which are required for solving numericals. Let us see graphical representation of intensity distribution for interference pattern. All of you are familiar with interference pattern which looks like this. Here you can see that there are bright and dark bands in interference pattern. Graphical representation of intensity. It is graph of intensity versus phase difference or path difference. And this graph looks like as a sine wave where we have alternate maxima and minima. And this alternate maxima and minima is showing us the separation between two bright bands and two dark bands and we can see that they are spaced equally or I say that difference between two maxima is of 2 pi and difference between two minima is also of 2 pi that is from pi and 3 pi. So phase difference between two consecutive maxima or two consecutive minima is of 2 pi. Whereas path difference is for two consecutive maxima is of lambda that is here it is 0 and here lambda. So it is of lambda and the path difference between two consecutive minima is also lambda. Now this representation will match with our interference pattern and let us see here you can see that this maxima is at the center of bright band. Minima is at the center of dark band. All maxima are representing bright bands whereas minima are representing dark bands. So in this way we can represent intensity of interference graphically. Here I am giving you questions on today's topic. These are descriptive type of questions. If you solve these questions properly, it will help you for your board exam. Thank you for watching. See you soon in next video.